What up, Tag Family? WWE Backlash Francis in the books. How did it all go? I'll let you know after the intro. Bars. P-A-G. Well, that's tag shit. Free fall as I die through the kaleidoscope in my mind. No rope up to climb. Gotta remind myself that I'm fine. Mama, I don't really... What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's prestigious Scooter Ray here to bring you another quick tag, hot tag, based on WWE Backlash France. And it was a show. It was a show. Like, they went out there, they showed up and showed out. So the play. Uh, out of the five matches, you could say one was better than the other and things like that, but it was all good. All good. All great. Oh, and the sounds you hear in the background, it's from another from none other than at Stoner J Simpson7 on Instagram. Fire. Fire. Just like this PLE. And you know, let's get into it. Let y'all see that. Let y'all see that beautiful, beautiful graphics. So, this match, of course, is headlined by the WWE Championship match of Cody Rhodes and AJ Styles. You have the World Championship on the line with Champ Damian Priest defending against Yeet J. Uso. You have Bayley defending her World oh, WWE sorry, Women's Championship against Tiffany Stratton and the Glow Naomi. You have the Women's Tag Team Champion. Chips on the line of Kabuki Warriors versus the team of Jay Cargill and the EST Bianca Belair. And then we have a street fight. Yeah, I said the street fight. Y'all didn't expect to hear that. Street fight. The Bloodline, Solo Sokola and Tomatonga versus the team of Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. And you know what? Let's go and get into it, family. So first up, like I said, it was a good old fashioned street fight. And how did we get here? When the match started, well, actually, sorry, before the match could start, they started just beating down each other. Those four was just going at it. Referees, producers, you know how they always do. They was breaking it up. Adam Pierce comes out and was like, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? If y'all want to do this and truly beat the hell out of each other like that, disregard the rules, fine, fine. Make it a street fight. And made it a street fight, they did. They fall in the crowd. They fall all over. Trash cans, kendo sticks, chairs, tables, all of that stuff. And it was amazing. And you could tell they was having fun. And I love that this was Tama's first match and showcase some of that Tama, some of that Tama-ness. That, 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 that Tama Tonga-ness that, you know what I'm saying? We got so used to in New Japan. This was good to see that it wasn't meant to be made serious. It wasn't meant to be some truly like Broadway of a showcase. It was just my side, hate your side, Drake and Kendrick Lamar. And that might not be the only time I reference that beef this episode. Just put that out there. Drake and Kendrick Lamar. They was trading nukes with each other. Now, this match ultimately ended with KO having the pinfall on Solo and then out of nowhere, someone pulls the ref off the ring. And my whoops was that? The returning slash debuting of Tonga Loa. I, I don't think you heard me. Tonga Loa. If you WWE fans know, he was Hunako back in the day. But Tonga Loa has shown up to help his brother, Tama Tonga, and Solo get the dub. And it was like, the scream I scream. Yeah, I said it, the scream I scream 
when it was revealed that it was Tonga Loa, because everybody thought it was going to be Jacob Fatu or something along that nature. But no, Tonga Loa, the Gorillas of Destiny, are officially in the WWE. Now, just like J. Cole, I feel bad for Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman, just like how J. Cole bowed out of that rap beef, Paul Heyman wants to bow out of this new bloodline because he is so unsure of what's going on. He is over there in fear. He was he was in so much emotional distress after that match because he was like, where did Tonga Loa come from? Nobody told me Tonga Loa was supposed to be here. What, who, who is calling the plays in this bloodline? Well, I'm pretty sure at some point it's about to be revealed that it's Solo Sokoa. But even a bigger play, it might be The Rock. It might be The Rock making plays with this new bloodline. But yeah, ultimately, Solo, Tama gets the dub. And now, Solo, Tama Tonga, and Tonga Loa. Oh boy, we hear it now. Bloodline 2.0, we here now. Next match on the card was for the women, WWE Women's Championship. Once again, you got the role model, Bailey, defending against Tiffy Time, Tiffany Stratton, and the glow, Naomi. One thing I love after all of these years, and it harking back to NXT TakeOver in London, that the England crowd still serenades Bailey. Even when she was a heel, even and now her being a face slash in between, when she was the happy smiley hugger to the role model up until now, when they go overseas, that crowd love them some Bailey. They love them some Tiffany. They love they love them some uh, Naomi. One plus, you know what? To be honest, because I'm gonna say more on piece on it later on in the uh show that crowd just loved them from wwe people got boos they got boos they got cheered they got cheered singing their little songs chanting it wasn't a situation where they was like the crowd was hijacking anything because they went along with everything but boy oh boy oh boy was that crowd electric it, it, it pretty much made the show more enjoyable. But once again, more on that later. But yes, pretty solid triple threat match. Um, the only downside I have of this show altogether, everything was predictable. If you couldn't predict, the only thing that ended up happening that wasn't predicted was Tongaloa. Tongaloa was the only thing that was like a, what? But everything else was predictable. If you didn't predict this show five out of five, then, you know what I'm saying? Even though Jugs and I tied, but more on that later. Let's just have to, more on that later. But yes, solid match, pretty good match. I'm loving the fact that though Tiffany is not, they might not see Tiffany as world champion yet, that she's getting the experience to be in title matches. And who else to do it with Bailey and Naomi? And come Monday with the rosters officially switching and everybody's where they're supposed to be come Monday, it's going to be good to see how things play out and see, you know, how things fall and who's going to start challenging who and things of that nature. But was a, it was a solid match altogether. Kudos to all three ladies. They went out there and did what they needed to do. Ultimately, Bailey did win with a roll up to Naomi after Naomi and ba Bailey hugged it out, and you know they kind of celebrated with the crowd and things like that. But pretty solid match. No, no true complaints out of me with this one. Next up, we have the World Heavyweight Championship with Judgment Day's Damian Priest. And yeet main event, Jay Uso. Once again, Jay Uso went out there first, 
that crowd was going dumb. I mean, I, I, if I had to recently compare it, last year's backlash when Bad Bunny came out and how the crowd was just going crazy for Bad Bunny, the crowd, Jay Uso was in the crowd and they was like, it was, it was a sight to see. It was a sight to see. It was a thing to see. And that had to have been a good feeling on Jey Uso. It had to have been. It had to have been. Once again, another pretty good solid match, especially for Damian Priest, his first title defense. Who else to do it against main event Jey Uso to kind of truly establish yourself as champion? Of course, of course, of course, it wouldn't be a Judgment Day match without some type of interference. JD Madonna, Finn Balor all came out to eventually help pre-seal the win. And he had to seal the win by hitting the top rope south of heaven. Jay Uso was fighting that man. And then next thing you know, he had to take him to the top rope to hit that south of heaven choke slam. Ultimately, one, two, three, Damian Priest retains. After the match, Finn and JD was jumping on Priest and violently 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 damian priest removed them from being and he was like no i wanted to do this the right way i wanted to do this my way and jd and finn was kind of like okay fine cool whatever our bads our bads we're sorry we're sorry but it's it's, it's, it's gonna be interesting to see how this happens because it because at, at times, I was looking and I was like, Finn, go ahead and just deck him. You know, because Damian Priest has been real. I don't need me. I mean, I don't need me. <laughs> I don't need y'all, but y'all need me. You know? So we'll definitely see how this uh, plays out with uh, Priest and Judgment Day. Especially with Dominic being injured and Rhea being injured. Definitely gonna see. Next up, we have for the world, for the world, for the WWE women's tag titles, we have the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka Kairi Zane versus the team of Jade Cargill and the EST, Bianca Bella. Once again, that crowd was just chef's kiss. This match, once again, pretty predictable. But once again, like I said, though the matches were predictable, they were still good and entertaining. And this one, and I can appreciate WWE once again. It's like, hey, Jade, and, and whether this is true or not, this is just me spitballing some things. And it's not to offend. This is not to be menish, belittle, or anything. But I can appreciate if it's situations to where if Jade is not 100% ring ready, they're putting her in situations to where she's not exposed. Yes, she's in there with Asuka and Sane, who are just well accomplished. Her tag team partner is mad accomplished with Bianca Belair. So it's not a situation where she has to go out there and put on these uber technical matches or anything like that. You could tell, you know, some story beats are still trying to happen. And once again, that is perfectly fine. I have no qualms with somebody learning, especially if they're actively learning. None whatsoever. But the match ended with just Jay Cargill hitting a reversal of all reversals on Kyrie saying she caught her in a pop. She caught Kyrie saying jumping off the top rope in a power bomb position, kind of like this, spun her around to where the electric chair drop style, lifted her up, caught her, wow, jaded. Then Bianca hits the KOD on Asuka on two Kyrie saying, one, two, three, new women's tag team champions. Now, per that, damage control is on Raw, Bianca and Jade are on SmackDown, so damage control stays over there on Raw. But Bianca and Jade can go between 
both shows now since they are tag champs. But once again, I enjoyed this match. I enjoyed the fact that they're letting Jade get it. They're letting Jade learn. They're not thrusting her into a situation. They're not putting her in a spot to where it's like, hey, we want you to be instantaneous superstar immediately. Though she already has that superstar presence and they're giving her that superstar treatment, we want you to be in there just going crazy. I can appreciate that it's like, no, we want to take our time with this project. We want to make sure this project is good and ready to be that superstar when she's good and ready. And I can appreciate WWE for that. And the main event of the night for the WWE Universal Championship of the Galaxy World, you got the, the champ, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, which still sounds so weird considering how long Roman held that belt, versus Uncle Allen, AJ Styles. This match here, the crowd went dumb for AJ, the crowd went dumb for Cody. The crowd went dumb for this whole match. There was literally so much ruckus that there was times the camera was shaking. When they was doing like wide shots, the camera was shaking. There was only a couple of times where the crowd was quiet. They was going crazy in this match. And Solid match, once again, great match for Cody's first defense. I mean, it's Uncle Allen. Uncle Allen, one of the best to ever do it. One of the best to ever do it. He always prefer AJ Styles has always been one of those guys that he can make whoever look good with him. He made James Ellsworth look like a superstar. He was making Shane McMahon look like a million bucks. That's just the power of Uncle Allen. And not saying Cody's no slouch or anything like that, but it's just the fact that you're not going to get too many bad Uncle Allen matches. And they went out there and did it. Like I said, solid first defense, solid match. I mean, of course, ultimately Cody was going to win. You know, Cody wasn't going to lose the belt his first defense. Come on now. He worked. He worked for a good year straight to finish his story. And you think that they were going to let him lose to Uncle Allen on the first defense? Come on now. But solid match. It ultimately ended with a top rope Cody, Cody Cutter, which led into the crossroads. One, two, three. Cody retains. And like I said, the crowd from start to finish was just there for this match there interesting to see now like i said before come monday the rosters are locked so uh, i wouldn't be surprised if uh shinsuke tries to spin the block on cody since now shin is on smackdown i wouldn't be surprised maybe baron corbin uh who else is on smackdown now bobby lashley wouldn't surprise me because they are starting the king of the ring qualifiers come monday and Raw looks must-see from them qualifiers alone. I don't remember them all, but I do remember we are going to get Sheamus versus Gunther for sure. A round one match. Sheamus versus Gunther. But I might do a, a review on Raw, depending on how it all goes. But that's for Raw. This is Backlash. So it'll be interesting to see who's next for Cody. It'll be interesting to see if this bloodline stuff spills over. And speaking of the bloodline, a little tidbit I forgot to mention. Before the Jay Uso match, the bloodline walked past Jay Uso. Solo and Jay have a stare down. Tama and Tonga kind of just looks at Jay Uso, and Jay Uso is kind of just looking at them like, y'all better keep it moving. And then Paul Heyman, once again in Uber Distress, he kind of gave Jay Uso the blink twice, I need help. And Jay was kind of looking like, I'm on Raw, fam. That ain't my problem, boy. <laughs> but we see that it will be his problem. You know, they sowing seeds. Come on now. 
Solo, the Gorillas of Destiny, Roman, and the Usos. Just saying. That would be a hell of a six man tag. But yes, getting back to it, that crowd. I don't know because I can't speak on business or anything like that. Whatever the logistics is of being overseas, they might have to truly explore that more because the crowd being so electric, the crowd being so just vocal and being in it, it made you want to be in it more because the crowd was so in it. I mean, there was not one match where the crowd was just going crazy. And maybe WWE truly needs to start exploring more. Because I know they have quite a few PLEs overseas, but I wouldn't mind it. I definitely wouldn't mind it. We get these crowd interactions like this because they don't really see the superstars like that. I do not mind it. Overall, Backlash was definitely worth watching. Definitely from start to finish. Like I said, you're going to have your favorites. You're going to have your matches better than others, but it wasn't a boring show. I mean, the crowd wouldn't let it be a boring show. Simple and plain. Crowd wouldn't let it. Shout outs to my tag brethren, Lip Dizzle, Jaeger Bomb Bastard, Juggernaut 097. Shout outs to my Less Than Stealthy Ninjas. Cosmic Boss around your miss because this review will also be used for a Car Chronicles review as well. So you can check this review out on Tag. You can check it out on Less Than Stealthy Ninjas. This right here will be defended again the weekend, Memorial Day weekend, because Memorial Day weekend, that Saturday, we have King and Queen of the Ring from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and Sunday, NXT Battleground and AEW Double or Nothing. So I got a three-show gauntlet to try to retain. But yeah, longest reigning champ. I don't want to lose this. No time soon. But whether you loved it or hate it, don't forget to rate it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, perfect thumbs up. Like, share, comment. Let us know what you thought about Backlash. Let us know what you thought about Tonga Loa returning back to the WWE. Just let us know what you thought about them being overseas, anything like that. And after you do all of that, subscribe. After you subscribe, you got to tag that notification bell so you can be notified from when you get quick tags, hot tags, tag means, uh, uh, tier lists, dizzle moments, any of that stuff. Because you won't know unless you're notified. And when you're notified, you're certified. I couldn't think of nothing else to rhyme with it at the end, so that's why I just left it at that. So, yeah. Until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, love one another, take care of one another, look out for your mental and physical health, and let's sign this out with that too sweet. Peace, everybody.